Good afternoon, everyone. The Great Lakes Bay, Michigan Works is honored to serve as the speaker sponsor for today's event. And I have the privilege of introducing Mayor Maureen Donker to deliver our keynote event address. Mayor Donker has served in the Midland City Council since 2007 and was first elected mayor by her fellow council members in 2009. She has remained our mayor since that time. Maureen is a proud, lifelong resident of Midland, serving our community as executive director of the recent endeavor on the community advisory panel for Cabot Corporation, and also shares her time and talent with local organizations focused on health, arts, and assisting individuals in realizing their full potential and participating in fully in community life. At the state level, Maureen serves on the Michigan Municipal League Workers' Compensation Board of Directors. For her contributions, Maureen was recently honored with the Community Builder Award from the Michigan Municipal League. She has also been honored by the Girl Scouts, the League of Women Voters, the YWCA Great Lakes Bay Region, and with the prestigious Athena Award. Maureen is a graduate of North Northern Michigan University and the Great Lakes Bay Regional Leadership Institute. She and her husband, Norm, have two children, Aaron and John, and one grandchild. Please welcome to the podium, Maureen, Mayor Maureen Donker. get all situated here. So first of all, I have to say thank you to Chris for that kind introduction. Thank you for recognizing Teddy, my grandson. Um, it's the best thing ever, let me just say that. Um, and I want to thank my wonderful friends at the MBA for the invitation to be here again. I uh, truly appreciate this in a kind of an odd way every year um, once, once you invite me and then once I get done. So, I also want to say for, to, the, to the Alliance, you know, I had the opportunity to attend your annual meeting, and it was wonderful. It was a wonderful time, and I think everybody, you know, enjoyed that opportunity to find out things that were going on in the community, and certainly um, we appreciate all the wonderful work that you're doing, and I think we should give the Alliance a huge hand. to be joined by my fellow um, councilmen here today with me, and I'd like to introduce them. Pam Hall, Ward 1. Steve Arnosky, Ward 2. Diane Brown Wilhelm, Ward 4. And Mayor Pro Tem Marty Wazbinski, Ward 5. <laughs> so we also have some of our incredible staff members here. Actually, we have a lot of our staff members here. So we, you guys all have to stand up. Come on. <laughs> Let me just say, they are smart, they work hard, and they care deeply about the community, and it really is a pleasure to work with all of them. So thank you all for being here. It's nice to see your friendly faces out there in that crowd. There's a famous speech by Teddy Roosevelt, and it's titled, A Citizenship in a Republic. The speech is sometimes referred to as the man in the arena. It was delivered in Paris in 1910. There is one excerpt from that play, from that speech that makes it especially memorable, and I'd like to read it to you today because it's so fitting for us today in this time, 110 years later. It's not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement 
and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. As I reflect upon this past decade and I think about the new, I'm filled with gratitude. I think about those who have been in the arena with us, great leaders who have poured their passion into this community. Alan Ott, Randy Reeker, Don Carlson, Betty Toller, Howard Garrett. These giants, our giants, taught us about servanthood and community. They showed us how to lead with integrity, how to be inclusive and expansive, and they inspired us to be bigger and to do more. They helped build this incredible city. And I think about those who lead us today who share those same quality, names like Stavropoulos, Imposter Slattery, Delinsky and Mortensen, Kepler and Belshevsky, Lynch, Velasquez, Decro, our elected officials and public servants, our many business and civic leaders, our pastors and volunteers, our neighbors. We have the right people in the arena, good people, people who care deeply about our success and want us to grow and be better tomorrow than we are today. Our faces might be marred by dust and sweat and blood, as Roosevelt said. We may take some punches occasionally and sometimes we'll be criticized by people who are not in the arena with us, who sit on the sidelines and judge. Yet we are daring greatly. We continue giving all of our best efforts to our community because we know that with it comes the sweet triumph of our efforts. And so this year, I dedicate my remarks to all of you the men and women in the arena who are sharing their talents and expertise for the betterment of the community. Thank you for making the city of Midland the best, the very best place to live and work and play. I'm honored to work alongside of you, and I'm excited to share with you the progress from this last year. At the city, we continue to focus on the goals that work so well for us, economic sustainability, effective utilization of resources, and provide services that enhance quality of life. So I'd like to start out with what I think are our three main challenges this year. Water. Water is one of our most valuable assets, and water policy is a valuable tool that allows us to proactively plan for our future. We have had water agreements in place for decades with Dow. But those agreements have run their course, and it's time that we um, review them and update them. It is our goal that Dow and the other companies in the industrial park continue to be supplied with safe, quality water, while at the city we continue, continue to provide that water in a fiscally responsible manner. We are also facing a request from one of our partner townships for more water. Our predecessors were incredibly proactive and did an amazing job when they created the MUGA and when the water contracts were initiated. As they did, we are working carefully and thoughtfully through the many facets of this request to ensure that we protect the assets and financial stability of the city while allowing for reasonable rural growth. The health of our commercial quarters. The Midland Mall has lost many anchor tenants, and Kmart and nearby businesses on South Saginaw Road have closed. Those lo um, losses contribute to the deterioration of some of our key areas in town. While downtown is trending in the right direction, we need to stay focused on these areas so we do not miss any opportunities that might present themselves. And third, financial stressors. Our ability to maintain what we have without passing along increased costs to our residents and businesses becomes more difficult every year. We're a service organization, and our operational costs like road maintenance, equipment replacement, refuge collection, and recycling continue to increase. Our revenue remains largely flat. Now on, add to that new unfunded mandates and the need to address flooding issues. We can do it but it all comes with a cost. So we're trying to balance what people want and what they're willing to pay for. These are the conversations that we're having and we're working on addressing them. At our annual planning session in January, Council's directive to staff as it relates to creating of the budget was to maintain services at the highest level possible. 
We wanted to add an additional $100,000 to the stormwater fund, an additional $500,000 to the wastewater fund and for flood response and uh, program activities. We anticipate that we'll have about $750,000 budget saving, and we're going to put that towards the 2021 budget. And any savings more than that will be put towards building improvements for City Hall. Council also said that we would consider not more than a half a mil increase um, for the millage for the 2021 budget. And here you can see what the millage rates have been for the last few years. So now I'd like to tell you about some of our accomplishments from this past year and some of the things that you're gonna see in the future. One of our directives to staff last year was that we wanted them to take a deep dive into looking how the departments um, organize and provide their services. So based on that work, um, we reorganized our clerk's office. And in July, we welcomed Erica Armstrong, our new city clerk. So will you please join me in welcoming her to Midland? an election year. She was busy, busy yesterday, let me say that. Um, so with the proposal, with the passage of Proposal 3 in 2018, people now can vote um, by absentee ballot without having to have a reason. You know, absentee voting is easy. You don't have to go to the polls. It's, um, it's a, it's a, you have no excuses not to vote. I think that's what I'm trying to tell you. Um, so our city clerk has been really very busy getting things in place to handle um, what we consider to be is going to be a pretty in big increase in absentee ballots. Um, we have another election coming up in August and one in November, and we do really encourage you to vote. Our library um, became fine-free in September of this past year. We did this to improve accessibility to library services. We no longer have fines for overdue books, and we are no longer charging fees for um, DVD rentals or to put holes on library material. We also increased our access to digital platforms, so we now have platforms for um, books, films, e-magazines, and online courses. And we changed the layout of the library so people could most more easily access um, the things that they're looking for. This is a big year for our planning department. Um, they're going to begin a master plan, master planning process which is a master plan is a long range plan for 20 years. We use this plan to help guide future growth and development of the city. We hope to begin this process in June or later this summer, and we hope that all of you will participate in that because your participation is incredibly important. After more than 26 years in the police department, Cliff Block retired. He did, and now he's working for <laughs> our wonderful friends at SVSU. We conducted a national search and on February 24th we had the swearing-in ceremony for our first female police chief. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Nicole Ford and I ask you that you join me in welcoming her to Midland. The department also completed the accreditation process with the Michigan Association of Chief of Police. This was a pretty major undertaking. They take a look at everything we do and they review it against 105 standards to, sure, to ensure that we're in compliance with the best practices in law enforcement. Um, accreditation verifies that the department is fair, effective, and conceptually sound. We are the 24th department in the state to receive this recognition. And this past year, we implemented the use of body-worn cameras for our patrol officers, and we have new cameras in all of our patrol units. A safe community is one of the top priorities for our Midland residents. And with the changes in our manufacturing community, merger, acquisition, spin-offs, the creation of the iPark, we have lots of new players. The fire department has been very busy doing inspections and meeting with our new partners and developing relationships so we can support one another and continue to have a safe community. I also want to say congratulations to our fire department for the work and receiving the Luce Award for the work that they have done assisting them with fall prevention and fire safety. So congratulations to you on that award. We have lots of great things happening in our parks. 
The Noon Rotary donated $160,000 to help renovate Grove Park. This will include a basketball court, a small pavilion, accessible pathways, and a playground. Construction on this is going to begin this spring. Now moving down the road, we received $115,000 matching grant from the Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund, which is going to allow us to move forward with the construction of six pickleball courts and a tennis court in Central Park. In addition, in Central Park, we have a very exciting project, the Miracle Field Project. This is an effort to build a barrier-free, accessible baseball field with restrooms, concessions, and other amenities for children and adults with disabilities. This is a $1.6 million project, and so far we've been able to raise $1.1 million. So right now we're in the middle of crowdfunding which, uh, to raise $50,000. And if we do this, this will be matched by the MEDC from their um, public spaces program and we need to reach that goal by April 3rd. And I understand that we've also had another challenge from a community member um, in hopes that we can raise even more money so we have a matching grant from them. So I hope that you will uh, help us do that and participate and go online. You can go online to our website to see how to do this and we would really appreciate any support that you could give us. We did receive a 140 acre parcel from Dow for the, to augment Stratford Park. And our project, uh, the Overlook project in Upper Emerson, phase one of that project is complete. I think I've been talking about this for the last couple of years. It's a beautiful project. Um, I think it's gonna be the newest place in Midland for wedding for, you know, photos and graduation pictures. Our utility department continues to work on flood response efforts. Since March of last year, we have had robots in our wastewater pipes. So these robots are about range in size from the size of a small cat to a large man, and what they do is they provide us with data that tells us which pipes are in most need of repair or replacement. So we are now moving from the studying phase to the doing phase, and it's gonna take us really many years to accomplish this, and we're gonna take on as many projects as we possibly can that our budget will allow every year. We have six years of projects identified, and we're gonna be starting those that are in the priority one and priority two areas. Now we know that there's lots of folks who are really interested in this work that we're doing, so Katie, has created a new um, web um, webpage for that, so you can find out um, information on our, what's going on with our flood response efforts. You can access this through our website. The census. This is a census year, and your participation is incredibly important. The census determines not only how many representatives that we are gonna have in Washington, it is also used to decide where we're federal funds are going to be spent for things such as health care, roads, job training, and emergency services. Your completing and returning the census ensures that our community gets the money that it needs. If you don't do that, that money's just going to go to other states and other communities. For every person that we, that we do not account for in Midland, we are going to lose $1,466 per person per year for the next 10 years. So beginning tomorrow, um, postcards are gonna be sent out telling you how to access the census, either online, by telephone. It's simple, it's confidential, it's easy to complete, and we certainly hope that you'll participate. We have many wonderful community initiatives that are going on, and I'd like to give you just a quick update on some of them. The Wellbeing Project. We have been working um, continue to work on building well-being in Midland for the last couple of years. And in this January, we kicked off our second certification in, cre in creating well-being class. We have 50 individuals who are in this class who are learning the concepts of positive psychology. They're, they're taking those learnings, they're applying them in their life, sharing them with their family, with their coworkers, and out in the community. This takes us to 90 people who have been certified in this work who are committed to helping make Midland have the highest level of well-being in the state. Now, right now, we are the only ones who are measuring that work, so we do have the highest level <laughs> of well-being. Yeah, that's what I say. 
So on your table, you have some cards. We are in the process of doing the second well-being survey. We hope that you will participate in that. We had 1,200 par people participate the last time. Our goal is to get um, 2,000 people to do it. So if you would do it before the end of the month, that would be wonderful. Share it with your family, your friends, your coworkers. We would be very grateful. We continue to have a wonderful um, relationship with the University of Pennsylvania. And this year, we have two more programs with their School of Applied Positive Psychology. The Community Success Panel has a pro project with them, as does MidMichigan Health. Speaking of our community success panel, in October they became part of a national learning collaborative. And the collaborative is called the, um, the Baldridge Communities of Excellence. So for those of you who are not familiar with Baldridge, this was a st um, the Baldridge Award was established by Congress in 1987. And the award is the nation's second highest presidential honor for performance excellence. This process that this community success panel is working on is a three-year process. And the goal is to help uh, Midland you know, improve their performance, which will ultimately enhance quality of life. You know, the benefits of this are you know, we're going to learn the Baldrige framework. We're going to get to uh, network. We're already networking with communities across the country. We have a mentor to help us. And we are very excited about this work. You know, we're, we're new into it. And I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot more in the future. The Career and College Access Network works to ensure that everyone in Midland, has an, Midland County has an opportunity to get to and through college, technical, or career training. For Midland, this is really important. As Tony said, you know, we are kind of in a war for talent, and we want to make sure that we have the best talent out there, out there and this is preparing them, you know, to be um, preparing them for the 21st century workplace. This project started five years ago, and we're beginning to get some good results. And I'd like to share, just share a couple of those with you. Um, the first one is we see a 34% increase in the number of economically disadvantaged students completing post-secondary degree or, or credentials. And we have a 15% increase in the number of economically disadvantaged students earning their high school diploma or GED. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, there is a new preschool scholarship program that the Community Foundation recently announced. And this is important because research shows that the best ways to help kids be successful in school is to intervene early. This program is out there to help families who don't already qualify for some program, but yet don't make enough to send their kids to a high quality preschool. This work is being done with the Foundation, the Midland County ESA, and the Great Start Collaborative. The Community Health Improvement Plan. This started in 2016 and is coordinated by the Health and Human Service Council. And they address some of our community's most tough issues. Later life quality, healthy weight, substance abuse, and mental health. I mention this because I just want to remind you that this work is going on and that we have a great group that are working on it. And I wanted to take this opportunity to all of you who are working on this because it is such a huge need in our community and I thank you for doing that work. So now let me tell you about some of our highlights. Public Art. Public Art Midland is excited to announce their 2020 theme. It's called Art Plays. And this is a piano project where artists are going to be painting and decorating pa pianos. There's 12 upright pianos, and they're going to be placed around town. So not only will they look beautiful, hopefully people will be creating some beautiful music out there on them. Um, the mall has donated the space for the artists to work, so you can stop in and take a look while they're working on this. And on June 4th, there's going to be a kickoff of this program, and we hope that you're able to attend. So come downtown on June 4th. The Dow Tennis Classic. This started in 1989, and it attracts class athletes year after year. This is the only Michigan professional tennis event. I found that fascinating. And it's the longest running professional women's tournament on the USTA, and they consider it their crown jewel. This has a $1.5 million economic impact on our community. The Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. It was their goal, it is their goal still, I'm sure, to be the most innovative, sustainable, and inclusive tournament 
on the LPGA, and they nailed it. It was truly a year of firsts for them. This was the first ever format, um, team format in the history of the LPGA. This is a geo-certified tournament. Now, I had to call Ben and ask him to explain to me what that was, and I'm, unfortunately, I can't explain that back to you, but let me just say this. <laughs> uh, you have to do a lot, and you have to do it really well to get that certification. So because they were the first ever to receive this recognition during the first year of operation, I think we should just applaud that myself. So. And this was the first event on the LPGA Tour to be um, fully certified also. They won the Gold Driver Award for the best turn LPGA Tournament of the year. And again, this was the first time that at, that ever happened in, your fir in their first year of operation. They won the best social media campaign. This was $12.7 million impact on our community and $500,000 in charitable donation went back to nonprofits in the region. I would call that a success. <laughs> Um, they've already started out on this year. There was an Eat Great event in the beautiful Dow Gardens. Um, they've increased their purse size this year from 2 million to 2.3, so they can continue to um, attract the best golfers to Midland. And this year, they will also be on the Golf Channel, but they're adding just a little twist to that. So it'll be on the Golf Channel on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. On Saturday, it's going to be on CBS. And CBS has about four to five times more viewers than the Golf Channel does, so there's gonna be more people across the country watching good golf and seeing Midland, Michigan. I think that's pretty exciting. Um, they're in the process of looking for volunteers. It's a very, um, you know, it's a fun opportunity um, for folks. They, it's a fun thing to do. We hope that you will help them with this event and you can go online to sign up. Last year, we had over $31.7 million and overnight stays in Midland. And this does not include food, entertainment, or other activities. So I would now kind of like to take you on a walk of what I kind of call it, my walk around the community. So I kind of start out when I'm doing this and think, okay, what's going on where? So we're gonna take a little walk around. We're gonna start right here on Bay City Road, across the street, Savant, and I think it's across the street that way. Um, Savant has been in business for 50 years. And this started out as a one-man consulting business, and now it's a consortium of four internationally recognized companies. They recently broke ground for a $10 million expansion, which is going to include their headquarters and create 40 new jobs in Midland. Valley Lanes and Family Entertainment. Okay, I am in this area frequently. We're here today, we come for Wake Up Midland, there's lots of wonderful you know, fundraising events. But I'm sad to say I had not been next door in a while. Well, a few weeks ago, I was over there, and let me just tell you, they have escape rooms, laser maze, bowling alley, a VIP bowling alley, a VR room, and an arcade, and they are in the process of building this James Bondy kind of laser tag zip line facility out front. <laughs> And they're going to have a VIP axe um, throwing room pretty soon, too. So um, if you haven't been there in a while, I encourage you to do so. There is something for everyone. OK, Costco. Uh, I mean, I think this is incredibly exciting for our community. Um, it's going to, certainly going to have a change on, in this part of the community. Um, we at the city, we approved the site plan in December. So right now, they're in the final stages of just wrapping things up. And I think it's important that, you know, we give credit where credit is due. And I just want to say that Elaine and Christine Rapanis were really instrumental in creating a relationship with Costco and encouraging them to, to really take a serious look at Midland. So if you see them, please say thank you to them for that work. Corteva. They were the last of the spin-off companies, and in June they celebrated the opening of their new office on the corner of James Savage and Waldo Road. This was a million, multi-million dollar project. And in December, they announced that they would be making a $145 million investment in their manufacturing site here in Midland. I think this is a wonderful statement about their commitment to our community. Center City 
is a three-mile stretch of Saginaw Road from Manor Drive to Patrick, and it encompasses 225 properties representing small local businesses and large national chains. We've seen many businesses um, closing along this corridor, and now it's ripe for redevelopment, and we think that time is right now. We received a generous contribution from Dow to really help us kickstart these efforts, and a redevelopment plan has been created, and it was adopted by council this past August. It has two phases. The first phase focuses on developing a new streetscape on Saginaw Road from Patrick to Dartmouth, and we are in the process of pursuing some funds for that. We do have some. We need a little bit more. We hope to begin in 2021. You know, I talked about that there's lots of places that are closing on Saginaw Road. We do also, you know, have some businesses that have, you know, been there for quite a while. Village Green was opened in 1963, and Joe and Maureen Kaju have been the owners for the last 20 years. So congratulations to you on 20 years in business, and thank you. Um, the second phase of this redevelopment plan uh, has to do with the area from Dartmouth to Manor Drive, and it encompasses the circle. This project is going to be a ways down the road because we need to have more conversations about it and really reevaluate the circle to determine a future that's going to best serve its businesses, their customers, and the travelers that go through this area. We, um, 1016 recently opened their new offices on Saginaw Road, so we're excited about that. That happened in October. And there is a great new development that's going to be going in on the corner of Manor Drive and Saginaw Road, which is Midland Eye Care. And so that project will begin, um, hope, uh, I believe, yet this year. Moving now to the mall. We do have some good news coming from that area. McLaren opened their offices last year. We have a Panda Express, a new Taco Bell, Chicago Pizza, and we were really excited to hear that Planet Fitness was going to expand, and they chose to expand into the former J.C. Penney building. We think that this is exciting. It should be bringing some more foot traffic to that area, and we're anxious to see what kind of impact that that might possibly have. The fairgrounds, which are across the street. The Midland County Fair has been held in that location since 1947. The fairgrounds attracts 375,000 guests per year to, Mich to Midland, and it brings in about $3.7 million in new revenue annu annually to our community. This fall, they're going to be breaking ground for a state-of-the-art equine facility, which will be opening in 2021. Five years ago, voters passed a bond for Midland Public Schools, and those dollars have been making a real difference for our schools and for our kids. New Central Park Elementary, new maker spaces in all of the elementary schools, new science labs in both the high schools, safety measures installed in all of the schools, new infrastructure, technology, new buses, and much more. This project is under budget, it's on schedule, and there's more to come. Our high schools have rank in the top 10 in the state, top 10% in the state, and according to U.S. News and World Report, our 2019 graduation rate is 96%, which is 8 percent um, points higher than the state average. MPS has also been working on a district-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative, and Dow has very generously been helping them with this project. Their goal is for every student to feel valued respected, and included. For 59 years, Northwood um, has called Midland their home. In June, they completed phase two of their North Village apartment complex, and they did that just in time to welcome and to host the support personnel for the LPGA tour. This housing complex was a $28 million project that will house up to 328 students. In August, they welcomed their new president, Kent McDonald. Brad and I had an opportunity to meet with him, and he seems like a really nice, down-to-earth guy. Um, and what we were excited to hear is he, they want Northwood to become more involved with the community. We're looking forward to working with him and getting to know him better. 
And I hear that his tweet game is really strong. So if any of you are out there and you tweet, if you would just send this to him, I would appreciate it. He isn't able to be here, but it'd be nice if we could just send him some love. <laughs> Mid-Michigan Medical Center is our largest employer and they continue to grow. When you drive by their campus, you can see that they have a lot going on. They have embarked on a project that's going to provide seamless, coordinated cardiovascular care to their patients here and in, in the regions that they serve. Phase one of that project was completed um, this past year, which was the or Orchard Building, and phase two, which is the construction of the Heart and Vascular Center, is slated to be um, completed this fall. And again, we are very pleased that they have a project with the University of Pennsylvania this year, and their project is going to work on enhancing provider wellness. So we're excited about that. The Midland Center for the Arts. They continue to find new ways to engage, enlighten, and entertain us. Last year, the Center for the Arts hosted six performances of Mamma Mia. This was the first time that a performance company from Bay City, Saginaw, and Midland worked together on a single performance, and this was community theater at its finest. Midland Symphony's performance of the planets was combined with breathtaking NASA video of space, and that made for a unique sold-out evening performance, and five sell-out performances of the Blue Man Group. Now, I was talking to my neighbor about this, and he says, you know what, Maureen, that was, he said, I don't know how to describe what I was watching, but it was so much fun. <laughs> that is what I mean when they are always finding new ways to engage, enlighten, and entertain us. Pollster Magazine ranked, ranked them in the top 200 venues in the, world, in the world for ticket sales, and on April 6th, they're going to be kicking off their 50th anniversary season. Our beautiful Dow Gardens welcomed 350,000 guests to the gardens last year, which is approximately, with approximately two-thirds of those being outside of Midland County. And this summer, you're gonna be seeing big bugs in the garden. <laughs> now let's move to downtown. The M. Tony Bridge was 62 years old, and it was completely demolished and rebuilt in 18 months, and it reopened in October. This was a $21.3 million project. The road diet study. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. In December, in December, the city received a letter from MDOT um, stating that they had collected enough data to, data to analyze operational efficiency and safety of the US 10 business quarter. So they're in the process of reviewing that information and we look forward to hearing from them at councils in the near future. You're going to be seeing some new entryway features on Main Street that are going to welcome you to downtown, and this is a wonderful gift to our community from the Patty and Dave, David Kepler Foundation. And we did, DDA conducted a parking study, and the results are in, and we have plenty of parking, it's just not in the most convenient places. <laughs> so we are going to focus on how to maximize those convenient spaces, and this means you're gonna be seeing some new signage, and communications on where to park, and we are also going to have improved parking enforcement to ensure that customers and visitors can access the most convenient sites. Downtown's also going to be launching a new branding effort and website in June, and this is a sneak peek of what you're gonna be able to see. The Main Street Plaza under the Poseyville Bridge was completed this past fall. We're gonna start programming for that area in June of, this, of uh, this year. And this was a wonderful gift to us from the Michigan Baseball Foundation. Delta College broke ground in the, um, last year and they will look forward to welcoming students to their Midland campus in 2021. And we have 10 new businesses downtown. We have four restaurants, two spas, a coffee shop, a women's clothing store, a hair salon for men, and a new hotel. And we have Ace Hardware. Ace Hardware is our oldest hardware. It's not a chain store, it's a co-op. It is a locally owned, family owned business. That is why they can do the fun things that they do like showing movies on the side of their building and serving popcorn on Wednesday nights in the summer. And that is why they can sell 60 dozen donuts a day out of their gun department and they call it Guns and Buns. There are 
are some new things that are coming downtown. Three Bridges Distillery and Tasting Room, Brinstar Beercade. I've not been to a beercade. I'm kind of looking forward to that. And Shaheen Development announced a redevelopment plan for the former Midland Daily News lo location that would include 11 townhouses and 14 apartments. This pro project will begin later this year, and it'll take about three years to complete. That's really exciting for our downtown because having more people in the downtown area really adds to its vibrancy. In the past five years, we've had more than $80.5 million of pri private and public investment in our downtown. In Chicago, in 1899, our nation's 26th president gave another speech. And in this one, Mr. Roosevelt admired those who embody victorious effort. I think that's us. In it, he says, it's hard to fail, but it's worse to never have tried to succeed. I look around and I see how hard we're working. We're a community with vision. 2019 was an incredible year, and I think 2020 is going to be the same. There will be some surprises and successes, some failures, and if we're lucky, some second chances. And in the end, we will take pride in daring greatly because we are the men and the women in the arena working to make Midland a great place to make a living and a great place to have a life. Together, forward, bold, an exceptional place where everyone thrives. Thank you.